moment. Okay. And as always, these sessions are recorded and logged on the customer community for later viewing. Let me go ahead right now and I will do a screen share. And you should see my Vetter software calendar now. I'll pause every few minutes, right, just to check uh, the chat for any questions. And before I begin, I this was one of my tips of the week um, last, I think a few weeks ago. And it was about the conceptual difference between billing and checking out a patient. Now, when Vetter was originally built, the, the thinking was, was that the billing module would operate as defined. It's a place where one manages invoices, estimates, payments, right, returns, credits, refunds, etc. cetera. Uh, we did not originally design the billing module to check uh, pay, patients and clients out, which is why I always stress in my emails to check people out through either the schedule or and or the census. Now, that said, right, best, you know, the road to perdition is paved with the best of intentions or something pithy like that. <laughs> and, uh, we realize that people use the software in whatever manner they see fit. So a lot of, for example, equine and mobile large animal guys, they will come and create the invoices directly from billing instead of creating them through uh, the patient record or the medical note, which is what we had intended, right? They'll come here, create a new invoice, add items. People will check, clinics will check clients out from the billing module and collect payments. And people have complained to us, right? And rightfully so to the degree and saying, hey, this process needs to be easier. Uh, just so you know, we did not originally intend for the billing to work that way, we wanted people to use the checkout option. That said, uh, we are in the process, one, we're releasing our new record or new billing dialogue in the next couple days, and I'll preview that in just a moment. And the other thing is, is we're going to permit, coming up also this quarter, we're gonna do the whole checkout option directly from billing too. So billing will no longer be the standalone module. It will do everything the checkout function does in the schedule and in the clinic census. And I hope that made sense. I'm gonna pause very quickly, see if there are any questions. Okay, good, I'm making sense, I hope. <laughs> um, so that said, let's briefly review what billing does. Okay, on the simplest level, it's a place for you to view your invoices, right? Now you can add, create an invoice directly from here. We had intended it to be used kind of in the sense of, you know, Mr. or Mrs. Jones calls and says, hey, I need to pick up Fluffy's medication after work. And they just pop in really quickly, right? And create the create invoices created up front. Now, I'm gonna go through these steps to show you the new rec, show you the record dialogue and how we're gonna enhance it. So let's just say I'm going to grab a couple. You know what? I'm a huge Warriors fan. The Warriors are up 2-0 in the playoffs, so we're going with Clay Thompson and his pet Rocco. Sorry, everybody else. <laughs> and one thing that's key here is that a lot of people skip over this, but if someone is coming to follow, uh, collect, I'm sorry, pick up uh, follow-up medication, you can tie it to an existing medical note. Now, I don't seem to have an existing medical note here for Clay Thompson, but you know what? Then let's be, let's use the, sorry, Warriors. Let's go to here um, and see, for example, like under Homer Simpson, I have a ton of medical notes that I could tie this to. And you could ask, oh, is this for your recent visit? And this just creates more continuity amongst your records, okay? Um, and I hit save, and now the invoice has been created. Now, in an, just a second, I'm going to make sure we're all muted here. Just a moment. Okay. Thank you. 
And now, okay, we'll put in, I don't know, something cephalexin or something like that. And the first time through, you will have to add the patient name because clients have multiple pets, okay? Going forward, every new record will now automatically default the existing patient name. Now, one thing that you're going to see here, uh, when the new enhancement comes out, it will only be one screen, okay? Um, there's no more two screens, so it's going to reduce clicks, okay? You can also tie these to any open diagnoses, again, for continuity of records. Uh, the other thing will be is that you can create a record or a charge for all items, medical and non-medical and labs. So no longer will you have to, if you're in the patient record, click on create new lab or create medical record. It'll just be one create record one screen, less clicks. And I, I hope you're all cheering behind the scenes. Um, <laughs> and of course, right, lot numbers, and I'll use this opportunity to show you how lot numbers always work and better. It's a first in, first out proce uh, process by expiration date. Now, I intentionally make these mistakes for demos. If you have lots without expiration numbers. The software assumes that, well, these must have to go out first, which is why they pop up. But you still have the option to choose whatever lot you wish. Okay. And I come to here and I hit save and add new, right? And now at the very least, right, the patient's name will always default. So just to show you um, the old way, well, and the new way, again, will be just one screen, one pop-up, less clicks, and all medical items. And all medical items, medical and non-medical, can now have lot numbers too. All of this will be tracked in inventory. So this was specifically a concern of clinics who were tracking their rotors, right? Abaxis rotors, HESCA rotors, et cetera, and they wanted to keep track of them in there. Now with this new feature, you will, will be able to track the sale of the, or the, the lot number usage for rotors and inventory also, okay? Um, all right, so that being said, that is invoices right there. Now, from here, we can collect payments. Now, another thing, different from the checkout feature, okay? If there are other invoices right here, you can click and these other invoices will show up versus the checkout feature in the schedule where really all the invoices populate because this wasn't designed to be a checkout entirely. Moving forward, the, the, we will enhance this, as I mentioned, this quarter so that this matches or mirrors that of the schedule, okay? I can collect for all or some, right? You can use our Card Connect, our payments provider. You can use your own. And again, we're just registering, right, payments here. And I can send off a receipt if I wanted to in the process and then save and I'm done. Okay. Now, I'm going to use this example here from Homer Simpson. And... There we go, payment saved, receipt emailed, everything done. This will simultaneously show up right in the client history. So if I go to the client history and I wanna check billing information up here, I can see payments right here, made, boom, done, okay? Um, also, by the way, while we're here, and this does involve billing to a degree, please remember that clients can be exempted from late fees, statements, and taxes on an individual level, okay? Now, popping back to here, Homer just bought some cephalexin, okay? Let's just say, for whatever reason, I know we don't want to return pharmaceuticals, but for our example here, Homer wants to make a return, okay? So we come back to here, and the first thing we do is we make a return. Credits and refunds happen after the return. So I come here, client name, Homer Simpson. You can make notes here, right? Uh, depending on where the item was damaged or rejected or what have you. And now I need, I need to add the item. Now, hopefully the client presents it, but if all else fails, 
right, every item that Homer has ever purchased, <laughs> right, will appear. And so this is uh, relatively easy here. Here's the one from April 18th. Boom. Cephalexin. Done. Okay. Now, yeah, we had a minimum price on there of $10. We're returning one. We can restock one if I want to put it back in the inventory. If not, I don't restock it. Okay. And I can, right, deactivate the medical record. Hey, the client never got it, which I'll do. And the reason why. Let's just say whatever. It was a damage. It was a recall on it. Okay. And we hit save and close. So now the return has been logged or it's been created. You look at it. Do I need to edit anything? No. Now we click post return. Okay. Now, clinics sometimes get confused by this because they confuse returns with credits. Return is just the act of returning something, right? Uh, now, do you want to issue the client a credit or a refund, okay? If I issue a, right, a credit, it's just going to go straight on their account. And those $10 can be applied to a future purchase. Or I process a refund right here via a credit card, cash, what have you. I'm going to create a credit, though, just to continue the, the narrative. I post it. Boom. Okay, so now if I look at Homer's account and I come to Homer here, right, uh, Homer has a balance of $10 or a credit of $10, right? I view credits. You know, there it is. Okay, so now... And for any future invoices, we can post that said credit against the invoice for Homer, right? So I let's create a, in fact, does Homer have any outstanding invoices? I think I paid them all off. Look at that. That's, <laughs> Homer's usually in debt. Well, let's create a really quickly a new invoice for Homer. And we come to here, Santa's little helper. And let's just add a, I'm just going to add a bundle here to make this very easy. Make it quick. Boom. So now we've added, right, a whole bunch of charges. It's going to take a moment here because it's a bundle. It has to do a bunch of updating. It's updating reminders, updating inventory and such. And then what we will do is once this is added, we will go ahead and create, apply the credit against it. And by the way, I live in San Francisco, you know, center of technology and all these good things. And here we are, Wi-Fi looking for record, for networks. Thank you, San Francisco. I apologize. This is my internet not being great. And okay, pausing. I'm gonna cancel out of this. I don't know why that just happened. I'm assuming my internet is working better. Let me try this again. I'm just gonna, I don't know why that happened. I apologize. I blame North Korea. And <laughs> I'm just gonna add a single item here. Just make this process quicker again. Uh, let's say this time he buys some dog food. Okay, boom, and for Santa's little helper, and Redwood Cities where Vetter is located, and we hit save and done. Okay, now, if you'll notice here, there is a credit that can be applied. I don't have to apply the credit, but I can, okay? And so I can come to here, and I'll come and I'll say, hey, I can view the credit, there it is, Let's go ahead and apply this credit here for Homer. And the credit's applied. The total of the invoice was $22.29. Okay. So now if I need to go ahead, now the balance on the invoice is only $12.29. That's how, and look, I can always unapply the credit, right? And it goes right back here. So you can't really make mistakes with that. Sometimes we have clinics that do. They write us. We can delete the credit, undo it, what have you.
Okay. Um, I'm going to pause very quickly to see if there are any questions. No, I guess we're doing fine. Now, coming back to the billing module, we've covered by right, payments, returns, credits, refunds. Uh, occasionally, you might, <clears throat> excuse me, occasionally you might be tasked with having to write something off. Bad debt, right? Uh, and it looks like Homer's, yeah, it looks like it created that prior invoice for that bundle. I don't know why it was left hanging right there. I'm sorry, I can't explain that. Again, North Korea's fault. And let's just say Homer, yeah, he's not going to be able to pay, pay one of these off. He's become a deadbeat. It's been 90 days, what have you. We can't hear from him anymore. And we can just write this off for tax purposes, right? And I write Homer, and now it's going to show me Homer's open invoices. And I believe this was the most recent one for the dog food. And, you know, client moved, unresponsive, can't collect debt. And it's not worth $22, right, to go to a collection agency. I save it, and now the write-offs are logged. And that was then, obviously, can be applied against it as a credit on clinic's taxes for the following year. And should any of you keep uh, cash drawers, you can always do cash reconciliation and there's reports that match this, right? So I could start the day off and say I have a cash drawer and I have $200 and, you know, the ending balance is one, you know, uh, 150, right? It allows your practice manager at the very least, right? To say, hey, well, oh gosh, where are where did those fifty dollars go? Right, was this uh, used in petty cash? Was it used as a client refund or credit? Right. In other words, the difference there better match up then with your daily transactions log. Ideally, there should be more in the cash store at the end of the day than in the beginning. But uh, some clinics use this, some don't. I recommend using it because, at the very least, it enables you to get a quick glance saying, "Gosh." $50 less in the cash drawer. Let's take a look at our daily reports, right? And take a look at our daily transactions and daily collections detail or our daily cash reconciliation report, right? And any cash that went out, right? If you collected payment, right, um, from with cash, it's going to show up in here. And so this should then reconcile this is a great check and balance, right, for clinic security, okay? So that's an, a quick overview there of billing. I'm going to come to estimates in a moment. One other thing that involves billing are your settings. Now, I mentioned this in my recent email, um, and I will look, you know, those of you who know me know of nothing else. Uh, I will give you an honest appraisal when Vetter does things well and when they don't do things well. And one thing we have not done well for a while is we printed balances on account balances on invoices, and that tended to confuse clients. I imagine many of you are chuckling behind the scenes. <laughs> um, now, my CEO, uh, freakishly smart, right? He wrote the software and he's a lawyer and he's an accountant, which is a dangerous combination. That means that he had always designed the reports, I'm sorry, the invoices and the statements to be similar to that of a, um, what an accountant would read. Well, accountants don't consume information the same way that us normal humans do. And we got the message. So moving forward, Right, you have the option now to exclude account balances on invoices. I say do it because it just confuses people. Um, and they're like, why do I owe this and what's this for? No, here's the invoice, and that's fine. And I can display or hide the account balance. Okay. Um, other things here um, billing record lock. Now, you have the option to some clinics want because of security reasons, have they lock their billing records and then you have to enter a password to add, edit, or delete any record that's dated on or before the applicable date. This is a clinic decision. We provide it, right, make that so that you have an option. 
Um, it is cumbersome to work with. Ideally, you have a trusted workforce and don't need this. Um, also here, I can put anything I want on the billing statement footer, which comes at the bottom. Always, 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 as you know, as I say, check in people with an invoice. And you can make this a default option right here. Right? Always do this. Clinics, when you forget this, it does, it hurts reporting down, downstream. Other things here, you can have an estimate footer, invoice footer, what your late payments want, what you would like for them to be, which brings me to payment terms. Um, if you want to charge late fees, right, you may do so as follows, right? 10, 15, 20, whatever, here are your options. Let's say it's net 30. Apply late fees or not, right? One and a half percent tends to be standard. We've had clinics ask us, most states in the union have an 18% annual interest rate. Anything above that is considered usury. Unless, of course, somehow you're a payday loan company and you get away with that crap. <laughs> Pardon my editorializing, but I can't stand those guys. Uh, that's a whole nother narrative for me to go off on. <laughs> uh, but one and a half tends to be the standard. 12 times one and a half being 18% on an annual basis. And you can apply a monthly one time. And you can some clinics want to give a grace period and say, hey, you know what? Let's not apply this till maybe 10 days after past due to all open invoices or ones with certain balances and unpaid, right, or new invoices only. Now, if I change these terms, right now, 46 invoices will be impacted by any changes I make. If I hit net 10, I guarantee you this amount will go up. Now, when you make changes, it takes a while for the software to calculate so people sometimes have called us and said oh it's taken like 20 seconds or 30 seconds yes because there's a lot going on behind the scenes this is the type of change i recommend doing not in the middle of the day right uh but at the end of the day when less people are on the system and it will not potentially impact negatively your client's experience while your system's waiting to update so just be aware that it will let you know in advance how many invoices will be impacted. And if you went to something like net 10, I guarantee you your number's now in the hundreds, and that takes a while to compute, okay? Now, let me pause and see if there are any questions. Ooh, I'm doing good. Um, a lot of clinics have joined, this is great. And now, having done all of that billing and these areas and settings here, and by the way, while we're here, you guys get a sneak preview of the new um, account statement. And in fact, I think I have it here on my desktop. Give me a moment. I'd like to show you the new account statement. Oops, no. Ooh, there it is. Here it is. Pardon me, my screen's cluttered here. So this will be the new account statement, which will go out uh, either tomorrow, Thursday, no, tomorrow is Thursday, Friday. It's gonna next couple days. So it will, first of all, we have switched, right? Return address and clinic logo. So for the return labels, those little plastic window envelopes. Also, it's gonna look just like a credit card statement. Boom, account summary, purchases, payments, credits, finance charges due. Every, and then every transaction detail. A lot of clinics have asked for that. Hey, we need to see a per item. Looks just like your credit card statement. And again, I know you're all saying, ooh, ah, right now. <laughs> um, I, I apologize that this was not initially done so. This is what happens when you let accountants be in charge. Now we let product people and people like me <laughs> help design this because I work with clinics directly and I know what you guys desire. This is a much cleaner, nicer version, much easier to consume by your clients and it will be a huge win. So please look for this in the product eminent, eminently. Um, see if there's any questions about my the new billing statement. So see, logging into office hours gets you sneak peeks. All right. Let me bring back the screen here. And 
I'll come to last thing is estimates. Now, um, estimates, right, very easy process, but I want to create the estimate this time from the schedule because this, I've had clinics ask about this, and this was also one of my tips of the week that you can create, because people have said, hey, but if I create an estimate, how can I check someone in with an invoice? Well, watch, don't worry. It will, uh, let's say this was a surgery, and uh, this is a surgery here. Clay Thompson and Rocco. And what I meant to finish was, was that Dr. Seuss was that even if the in even though if you create an estimate at the time of check-in, okay, um, and Clay Thompson, as you saw by the way, has no email address or anything, so I can't. By the way, little trick here, I can't send a reminder. So no address, no information means no reminder. Um, and even though confirmation will go out, it'll, it'll bounce back and say no confirmation because I have none. Okay. But what I meant to say was is that you can see confirmation not sent, no email on file. Now, what I meant to say was even if I create an estimate at time of check-in, it will convert into an invoice, which is how we want to check in all appointments. So I'm going to come to here and I'm going to say, let's use our surgical procedure bundle. And I'm going to create a new estimate, and I hit next. And I take a quick look here. And so, you know what? This could be complicated. Rocco has a lot of internal bleeding, maybe, or what have you. And this might take, you know, I should have maybe put this by the hour, $280 an hour, maybe. And say it might take one to two hours, right? And it might need, you know, multiple, you know, more than one ml etc maybe more than you know oops maybe more than um 15 minutes of anesthesia you get the idea and i hit save so now the estimates created and the technician generally you can take the you can take uh right clay thompson in the back room and we can take a look oh here's the estimate we click on the estimate, and now it's Clay Thompson can approve it, right? The client can approve it. Um, sure, this range is fine. I could pay as little as this or as much as this, but my animal's precious to me, so so be it. We'll go ahead and approve the estimate. And again, I don't have a tablet here, but if you had a tablet, right, they could just draw it with their fingertips, right? You can use a little Etch-a-Sketch here. I just prefer to, to type it. And now the estimate is approved. I can now export this estimate to the client. It's automatically going to be logged in their client financial history anyhow. I convert it to an, an invoice. And as a general rule, I mean, it's hard to, you either have to apply the low range or the high range. You can't really, it's very difficult to say, oh, this item was only this much and this one was high and this one was low, right? But so let's just say we apply the high range because you can always then, right, edit the invoice after the fact. But now what's important is this. Notice invoice 3546. If I jump back to the schedule, okay, and I now look at Clay Thompson here, right, it's already been converted to an invoice. So the software is being intuitive there and knows that we want to check everyone in with an invoice. This then will generate data for your sales by appointment type, your referral type reports, and daily transactions in a much more synthesized and coherent manner. So the software is doing that. No need to worry if I create an estimate, then it doesn't convert to an invoice. Now, jumping to that invoice, if I still needed to make changes at the very end, okay? Say, you know, it really only took us, you know, gosh, it only took us uh, an hour and a half, okay? 
And so then I can go ahead and I can come here and say, well, it wasn't quite two hours. It was an hour and a half. And thus editing the price. Okay. And just like that, right, we have now the final invoice has been edited and I can collect payment. On this note, I've had, we've had clinics ask and say, you know, sometimes they create invoices are created after the, you know, an invoice will have multiple entries over multiple days. And clients have sometimes asked, well, hey, if I edit the date of the invoice, doesn't that automatically, um, oops, excuse me. Um, if I want to edit the date of the invoice, we'll actually have to edit the estimate date here. But if I edit the estimate date, and let's say it was April 16th, and they want to know then why the charges don't edit to change to April 16th. That's an intentional decision by us. We cannot assume that an invoice edit automatically equals that every charge gets edited because this affects reporting and in a way financial documents are legal documents, de facto legal documents. So unfortunately, people still need to edit. If you want to change the dates of items, you have to edit them individually. We just can't make that assumption that's automatically going to do it for every item because it's a dangerous assumption to make. Um, other thing here when you edit invoices, you also have the option, right, to apply, right, these discounts. And these discounts are created in inventory, and you can also have client-level discounts so that those are automatically applied, okay? Being a good Golden State Warrior, he gets a 15% discount, right? And thus we have everything there. So that was a whirlwind tour through the billing module and its associated components. I'm gonna pause right now and see if there are any questions. Um, no, if anyone wants to unmute themselves right now and ask, please feel free instead of chatting. But I hope that this was thorough and informative. And you gotta see a sneak peek of uh, the new billing statement. And now you have an idea of also what the new record dialogue will look like and a peek into how we're going to enhance billing moving forward. Okay. Uh, any other, so I used to be a public school teacher for 20 years. And, uh, I always worried if no one said anything, either I was really good or really boring. I'm going for the former. I hope uh, if there's any other questions, please unmute yourself and let me know. Other than that, I, the, this session is recorded and will be accessible in the customer community a little bit later today. Okay. Again, I'm Matt Zayner, Matt at vettersoftware.com. Most of you know me by now. If you need anything um, or need to have one of our engineers beaten with a wet noodle, <laughs> I'm your guy. Give, uh, just contact me and I'll always do my best to help. Thank you, everyone, and have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye.